This tutorial is about binary ionic compounds with transition metals. If you recall from the tutorial about ion formation, transition metals are multivalent. So that means they can have more than one possible cha a charge. So when you write the name, you have to make sure the oxidation state is given. And how you typically do that, you would have to write a Roman numeral. So for example, let's take Fe2+, which is iron with a charge of 2+. Plus. When we write the name, it has to have a Roman numeral. So you have to write iron with a Roman numeral. And since it has a charge of 2, you have to have a Roman numeral 2. Now the multivalent metals are going to be able uh, found on your chart that I gave you in class um, and with their possible charges. So just an overall recap, the metals found in the S block versus the metals found in the transition metals, when we do naming, there's one key thing that you need to know. So the S block requires no Roman numerals, while the transition metals require Roman numerals for the charge. So when we write Na+, you just write the name found on the periodic table, sodium. But for the transition metals like iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus, you have to write iron with a Roman numeral 2 for Fe2 plus and iron 3, Roman numeral 3 for iron 3 plus. Hope this helps you. You just need to look at where they are on the periodic table. Are they in the S block versus are they in the transition, which is the D block? So first, let's talk about how do we go from name to formula. First, you need to determine the charge of the cation. And that's really simple if you have a, tra uh, a transition metal because the charge is the Roman numeral in the parentheses. And then you just need to find the charge on your anion. Once you have the charges, you can go ahead and do the crisscross and then bring it down to its empirical formula. So our first example is going to be copper 2 chloride. Considering the fact that we already know that the charge of copper is in the Roman numeral, we can just go ahead and write copper 2 plus and we have chloride, which is chlorine. And if we look on the periodic table, it has a minus one charge. Now we're going to go ahead and do the crisscross rule. Okay, our final chemical formula should be CuCl2. Now let's try for copper chloride. We already know the charge of copper indicated by the Roman numeral. So I'm going to go ahead and write copper 3 plus because of the Roman numeral 3. And oxide, if we look on the periodic table for oxygen, it should be minus 2. And again, let's go ahead and do the crisscross rule. I'm bringing the numbers to the subscript. And you end up with Cu2O3. This is copper 3 oxide. Now that you've learned to write the chemical formula from the name, this is going to show you how to write the name from the chemical formula. And this is where it differs from the simple binary ionic compounds. Because transition metals have more than one possible charge, there's actually one extra step we have to do in order to determine the name. So let's take FeCl2 as our first example. The first step is to look at the charge of the anion. So in this case, that would be chlorine. And since there are two chlorines, I'm going to write chlorine, chlorine. If we look on the periodic table, chlorine has a minus one. And since there's two of them, I will put minus one on both. Now, when we go ahead and total up the charge of the anions, we are just going to add up both a minus 1 and a minus 1, which gives us a total of minus 2. Now if you recall, 
In an ionic compound, the charges of the cation and anion must cancel each other out. So you have to have a total charge of zero. It's completely neutral. So that must mean that when we have a charge for the cation, it has to be a total of plus two. So let's go ahead and look at iron. Okay. Earlier we said we had two chlorons, but in this formula now we have one iron. Because there's one iron and we have to have a total charge of plus two, we can say that the charge up here for iron will also be plus two. So when we write the name, it would happen to be iron two because of the plus two charge and chloride because we have chlorine and we just changed chlorine to IDE at the ending. So iron 2 chloride is the final name. So now let's go ahead and take CuO as our next example. We know it has copper and has oxygen as our elements, but we still don't know the charge of copper, so we can't give the name. So let's go ahead and do our steps. We have one oxygen, and if we look on the periodic table, oxygen has a minus two charge, and since there's only one, I can say that my overall charge is minus two. Again, because it's a completely neutral compound, the charge on our, anion, our cation has to be a positive two. Now let's go ahead and look how many coppers do we have, which is our metal. We only have one, therefore, again, this charge has to be the charge up here because there's only one copper ion. Therefore, the name would be copper 2 because of the 2 plus charge on copper oxide for the oxygen. So it's copper 2 oxide is the final chemical name. Okay, so let's go ahead and recap the steps on how to determine the name from a chemical formula. One, determine the charge of the anion, meaning the nonmetal. Based on the number of anions in the chemical formula, you can determine the charge on the cation. The charge becomes the Roman numeral of the name, so the Roman numeral. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more exercises. Um, the first one is PbO2. So there are two oxygens, O and O. And this time I'm going to represent their charges using a box, minus, 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 minus. Okay, this gives us an overall charge of negative four. Because there's an overall negative charge of four, that means this has to be a plus four. If there's only one lead, that means the one lead has to have all the charges in order for this to neutral out all of the negative charges. So that means the lead has a positive four charge. So I would write this as lead four oxide. Here's the second example. This time I have Fe2S3. Our nonmetal, our anion, has a charge of negative two, and I'm gonna go ahead and represent this as a um, box with two negatives. And because both there are three of them, that means I'm going to go have a total of a negative six charge. Since there's a total of negative six charge, that means my total cation has to be six, positive six. There are two irons, so that means I have to go ahead and write the two irons. And because there are two irons, they can't be pl both plus six. They have to be plus six divided by two. And so I'm going to go ahead and write my two boxes, and there has to be a positive 3 in each in order to cancel out all the negative charges. So, when we write this, we will be writing this as 
iron three sulfide. So here, it's your turn to go ahead and practice. You may go ahead and pause the video at this point and try them on your own. Unpause it and I will go ahead and give a description on how to solve these. If you do not want the description, go ahead and just fast forward to the end so that you can see the key. So let's go ahead and look at tin chloride. If we look at tin chloride, tin is SN and it has a charge of plus two because of the Roman numeral. Chlorine, which is chloride in this case, is a minus one from the periodic table. And if we do the crisscross rule, we're gonna take the charge and turn it into the subscript. So therefore we end up with SnCl2. For copper one bromide, we can go ahead and write copper, which is Cu. It has a plus one charge because of the Roman numeral one. And bromide is bromine. It has a minus one charge if you look on the periodic table. And we'll go ahead and do the crisscross rule. And you end up with CuBr. Now let's go ahead and do the opposite. You're given the chemical formula and we're gonna find the name. So if we look at chlorine and lead, we're gonna look at chlorine first because that's the anion, and chlorine has a minus one, and there are two of them. That means there's a minus two total charge. Therefore, it has to have a positive two here, so a plus and a plus, but because there's only one lead, that means that we're going to go ahead and make lead a total of a positive two charge. So when we write this down, it should be lead, Roman numeral two, chloride. Let's go ahead and look at CO2O3. This is cobalt two O3, oxygen three. And um, so if we look at oxygen, there is three of them, and this time I'll do represent it using the box, minus, 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 that gives us a total of negative six. We have to have a total of positive six, so six of these positive charges, and because there are two cobalts, I'll go ahead and write two cobalts, and to evenly distribute the positive six charges, that means each of the cobalts has to have a positive three. Now, when we write this, we would write cobalt. And because there's a positive three, I'm going to go ahead and write Roman numeral three, and I'll put oxide, oxide. All right, so now that you know this, you can go ahead and complete the worksheet that goes along with this. Um, and then move on to naming ionic compounds with polyatomic ions.